easy not to make changes, but it's also really easy to make changes. And yet we look at so many people in the world who don't make changes. And I would say it's not a knowledge gap that people have, it's a doing it gap. Today's guest is my dear friend, Dr. Olina Kerrick, a trained pediatrician doctor. She now works as a health coach, teaching busy women to lead their most healthiest life in a way they love, so they can feel amazing leading a long life and teach their kids healthy living habits and is the author of Building Simple Habits to a Healthy Me. Welcome, Orlina. Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. What is one of the most courageous things you have done? I love this question. And I'm going to say, am I only allowed to choose one? Because I think I've done so many courageous things. I think... Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> but we can part that for another time. Hey, what, you know what my entire life history? Okay. I think I'm going to go with moving to Spain. So I moved to Spain, oh my goodness, like 10 years ago now. And essentially, I say I moved with my eyes wide shut, but it involved me changing my career. I gave up my career in the NHS. Um, mm -hmm. And I didn't really 100% know what was going to come out of that. Um, I thought I was just going to come and work here in the Spanish health system. Long story short, that didn't happen. <laughs> um, I built up an amazing business instead. But just having that ability to be able to say, yeah, do you know what? I'm not 100% sure what's going to happen, but I'm going to do it anyhow. And for me, I think, you know, making it work, that was, that was courageous. Definitely. Yeah. So what got you started on your journey of wanting to be a doctor? Oh, another interesting question. So I think when I was at school, I didn't really know exactly what I wanted to do, I, you know. I look back and so, so many opportunities available. You know, when you're young, you can pretty much choose whatever you want. And it felt slightly overwhelming. I have no idea what I want to do. I could do this. I could do that. And, you know, at that time, we didn't really have the Internet. We didn't have the resources to understand. You know, I remember people saying, oh, you could be an accountant. And me going, that sounds really boring. And having absolutely no <laughs> idea what an accountant was. Um, I took a year out after, well, I actually took three years out, but the first year out I took was I went to South Africa and I worked in a school in South Africa. And I remember um, helping the school nurse vaccinate the children and a doctor came in and he was vaccinating the kids. And I remember just looking at him and going, you've never really thought about being a doctor. You've kind of thought, doctor, no, but you've never actually considered it. And I think in that moment, I made a decision. I want to be a doctor and you know it's like one of those moments in time mm. where it takes a split second and it's like that is it commitment made I'm going to do what it takes to make this work and I you know I like to talk a lot about commitment actually because I think it's a really mm. important part of um getting your healthy life but you know I went on and I applied to get into medical school without mm -hmm. You know what the English system is like it's much much easier if you've got your school helping you do it and saying hey do you know what you want to answer this question in a different way um, or you want to showcase this I didn't have any of that help um, and I just did it and I didn't get in the first time around I went for an interview um, I didn't get in but then I remember talking to another doctor when I was doing a little bit of work experience. And he basically said to me, look, you know, if you're serious about being a doctor, it doesn't matter whether you get in this year or not. It doesn't matter whether you start now or in a year's time. If you've really made that commitment, you will carry on and do it. And so the short story is I ended up taking three years out, going to medical school, being a doctor. And, you know, the rest is history, as they say. <laughs> God, that's like really great. I mean, in that one moment you just realize is that epiphany moment this is my part go for it yeah so you sit you sound very passionate about healthy living and i know your books just come out building simple habits of a healthy me tell me more about your book and um your passion for healthy living How yeah that well, all about thank you for mentioning my book it's an amazing book it's like essentially my system and um, you know, the idea is to make it easy. Why am I passionate about it? Because, oh, 
I just think people can't afford not to live a healthy life. Um, mm. You know, I, on one level, I, I guess it's like this double-edged sword. On one level, I get so inspired by seeing people make these changes. So the women yeah. that I work with, I love seeing them being in this place where they're thinking, oh my goodness, nothing works for me. I can't make changes. I can't do it. It's all this. It's all this, what your brain is telling you. And then they start work with me and then they're like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. It's so easy. I've got so much more energy. I love making these changes. I love my new lifestyle. I couldn't go back to that rut. So I love seeing that. And I always think, you know, I would say it's really easy not to make changes, but it's also really easy to make changes. And yet we look at so many people in the world who don't make changes yes. and look at, you know, it's, I would say it's not a knowledge gap that people have. It's a doing it gap. Mm. And, and that commitment is really, really important. I talk to so many people and, you know, they tell me, yeah, I want to be healthy because, you know, I want to do this, this, this and this. And then, then they don't make the commitment. They don't yeah. sign on the dotted line. They don't say, yeah, I'm really going to make this happen. And that is heartbreaking. You know, you're so close to changing your life and going, yeah, I can avoid this disease. I can, if you, you know, it depends on what your goals are, lose weight. I can get you know really enjoy being in my body and enjoy moving my body and I can turn up with energy and I can inspire other people one of my clients yesterday was saying that she was chatting to her mum about making healthy choices and she's you know reached that stage of oh my goodness I am inspiring other people around me my loved ones to look at their choices and start helping Excellent. them making healthy choices I know it's amazing so why am I so passionate about it? Because it's so easy. It really is easy when you have the right support. And mm. I love my amazing life. I always say I lead a life of absolute luxury. I'm so blessed in so many ways. I've got four amazing kids. Yeah, they're normal kids. They scream and they shout and we have our normal tantrums and what have you. I don't mean by my life of luxury. <laughs> Servants who do everything for me and I buy Louis Vuitton bags. If only... <laughs> Oh, I don't mean that. I don't mean that. I mean, you know, I get to move my body. I've got my health. I go swimming. I go cycling. I go running. I go walking. I've got all of that. I've got energy. I wake up in the morning with energy. This is a life of luxury um, in my book. You know, that's a very interesting concept to put it like that. I've never heard anybody say it. And absolutely right. Spot on what you're saying. I love it. I love it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because absolutely I gave up sugar um it wasn't agreeing with me and I've got so much energy I just feel so happier fabulous congratulations and yes and you know sugar is one of the big 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 things um you know I I think mm -hmm. on one level let's be mm -hmm. honest we are what I call glucose seeking missiles it's part of our DNA it's yes. part of our survival instinct to seek sugar. But the reality is we do not need as much sugar as our brain keeps telling us that we need. We don't live in times of, you know, hunter-gatherers where... Absolutely. Getting yeah. a few blackberries was like, yeah, we've hit the crackpot. It's so easy to get so much sugar now that actually we need to train ourselves to go, do you know what? I, my body doesn't need this much sugar. Yes, sugar is the fuel that fuels our bodies, but what we actually have to retrain ourselves is how to give it up and how to get it from natural sources like fruits and vegetables and things like that. And as you say, that transformation in energy happens really, really quickly. Yeah, definitely. So how would you get people to change their lives, healthy habits? You know, what's your system or, you know? Routine? Yeah, good question. So I, I teach four pillars. I teach healthy eating, which in a nutshell is eat more fruit and vegetables, eat less packaged foods. Essentially, I teach the Mediterranean diet, the hallmark of the Mediterranean diet being extra virgin olive oil. But essentially, it's plant based. Doesn't mean you have to give up meat. It means you're getting most of your fuel from fruit and vegetables. It's flexible. It's tasty. It's easy. I could go on, but I'm going to move on. <laughs> Pillar number two is exercise that lights you up your body needs to be moved you need to have a certain amount of movement in your day and your week and if you are over 40 um you really need to pay attention to this because after the age of 40 you start to lose muscle mass if you don't do something about it and so if you're looking at your future you're looking at 
yeah, I want to live to be 70 or 80, it starts at 40. You need to start taking care of yourself in a different way than when you were in your 20s and your 30s. Pillar number three is delicious, healthy sleep, because sleep yes. is really, really important in terms of weight loss. Yes, it's really important if you want to lose weight. It's also really important to avoid so many illnesses, Alzheimer's. It's also really important for productivity and energy levels and just feeling great through the day. And then pillar number four is emotional wellness. And that mm. includes stress levels, that includes our relationship with food. So many people that I work with, you know, the big problem is emotional eating. And a mm. lot of people say to me, I eat healthily, but dot, dot, dot. And that but is, you know, I'm eating lots of chocolate. I'm doing, you know, I'm basically turning to food to relieve my stress levels. So, or, you know, to relieve my emotions. So getting tools and habits that serve you in, you know, you, your emotional toolbox, essentially, essentially. So those are the four pillars. And then the last component is creating habits, systems and routines so that you're doing it all without thinking about it. So you're not thinking, oh my goodness, I have to eat healthily today. No, no, you're just loving the food that you eat, which is what is perfectly normal for you. So yeah, our habits are things that happen when life happens. So for example, what did people do when we all went into quarantine? And if you look at your habits then, those are the habits that are your habits. So for example, for me, I just carried on eating fruit and vegetables. It wasn't like I then suddenly turned to loads of packaged foods. I'm not saying we don't ever eat packaged foods, but my mm. habit of eating fruit and vegetables is so strong that I wouldn't ever think of not doing it. It's just for me, healthy eating. Now, I'm not trying to say I'm more virtuous than people. It's just that that is the habit that I have. Mm. I'm all, you know, I was lucky. My mother always um, provided us with vegetables, essentially. And so for me, eating is, well, where are the vegetables? My meals don't feel complete if there's no vegetables in them. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Once you've got those strong habits, you're just doing it without thinking about it. You're not busy thinking, oh, yeah, I have to do this because you're kind of thinking, oh, I'm going to go for a walk now because it's walk time or I'm, you know, I'm really looking forward to going swimming. That shift doesn't happen overnight. But that's the shift that I walk people through, essentially, hold their hand while they make those shifts. The reality is what happens is I always talk about the chasm of chaos, which is life. And you start off with really good intentions and then life happens and then yeah. you forget about whatever it is you're doing. And that's when you need someone to hold you accountable and say, come on, we're still doing this. It's still easy. Have you remembered you're on this journey? Come on, let's keep going. And I think that's one of the really, really important aspects that if you have good support, you are far, far, far more likely to change and keep changing. Absolutely. I love it. And I think, you know, as one of your pillars, you've highlighted sleep. I think it's underestimated. It is so underestimated. How many people go on like three, four hours, 85? Um, yeah, there's, and a, I have... there's a really amazing book called Why We Sleep by a gentleman called Matthew Walker. And in it, they have an amazing picture of, you know, they did an experiment of spiders and they Ooh. had some spiders that were sleep deprived and they gave the other spiders like drugs, like amphetamines and alcohol and things like that. And they looked at the spider's webs and the worst one was the sleep deprived spider who's just done this disaster <laughs> of a, a web. But it's the same for us. And we walk around sleep deprived so mm. much without, you know, it's just normal life. It's, you know, apart from anything, it's super dangerous. Like car accidents that happen when you're sleep deprived are yes. worse than, than car accidents that happen when people are drunk driving. And I'm not saying that, you know, you should do either, of course not, but, yeah, absolutely. you know, we just totally underestimate the severity of sleep deprivation. It's just, oh, it's part of society. That's how we live our life. And I think, no, it's not how we live our life. Once you get into the habit of really prioritizing your sleep, it just becomes another thing. So I, I go to bed at 10.30. I've had, you know, a good sleep habit, habit for years now since I basically realized how important sleep was. And at 10.30, my body basically says to me, hey, it's time to go to sleep. My brain just starts shutting down. But all I want yeah. to do at that time is be in bed, essentially. I, I, I can match you there. At like, 
my friends know me so well, they know after a certain time, don't even ring me, even if it's nine o'clock, yeah. I'm winding down. Don't ring me. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, yeah, that, that's really interesting. And like you say, people think the number one thing is survival. It's not the number one thing as humans we do is habit. Mm-hmm. It's actually habit. Yeah. And, and being in survival mode is not good for you. So we live our life in stress mode. This, so if we look at stress, stress is something that, you know, we live in a society full of stress. And it's almost mm-hmm. like, you know, if you don't have a stressful job, you haven't earned your money. But when we really look at stress, it's actually very damaging for our health. And yeah, there are some times when stress will spur you to do something, but you're much better off being able to manage that stress and work out how you can do your job without stress or lead your life without stress. Not just stress from external sources, but our emotions as well. Our emotions can be a source of stress to us. And how do we manage big emotions? Um, So that's a lot of the work that I do as well. Yeah, especially like emotional eating and things like that. You know, for someone that's listening, what would you say is the most important thing about changing their mindset, their thoughts? Yeah. So, I mean, it's a really good question. And this is the, one of the number one things that I see is that you, re- if, if emotional eating is an issue for you, and to be perfectly honest, I think anybody who is overweight at some mm-hmm. stage in their life, they have eaten more than their body needs. Mm-hmm. Um, and for the vast, vast, vast majority of people, that is because of emotional eating. And until you figure out how to change emotional eating, nothing is going to change. Because I can tell you what to eat. I can give you, you know, hey, let's eat this, give you exactly what you're going to eat. But then what happens is the emotional eating comes back and it all just falls to pieces. So until you address that emotional eating piece, it's not going to change. So the big question is, how do you address those that emotional piece? Well, number one, you create habits in all four of those pillars. So what you are eating actually contributes to emotional eating. Like if you're eating a diet that is really high in sugar, you are going to be craving those high sugar things the whole time. And for people who stop eating sugar, it's much easier to maintain not eating sugar, not eating refined sugar I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So there are what I call, you know, the systems, habits and routines, the things that you do, the maintenance all the time, how you live your life. But also you do need tools to manage what's happening in that moment and really dive deep into that self-awareness of what is going on because you can't change anything that you're not aware of. Some people will be listening and going, oh, I'm overweight, but emotional eating doesn't apply to me. And my question with all the love in the world is really, can you really open up and look and see? Because if you're standing there saying, hey, it doesn't apply to me, you put yourself in a situation where you can't help yourself. So until you're honest with yourself, you can't change anything. And then when you do change things, it doesn't happen like this. It's not like, oh, I listen to a podcast and that's it, magic. Well, for some people it will, but for the vast majority of people, what happens is they go, oh, okay, I need to change this. Great. I've got a plan. Start implementing their plan. Things don't quite go according to plan. And then they beat themselves up. No, no, that's Mm. fine. If you can stand here in that place and go, okay, I'm going to hit 100 roadblocks before I totally nail this. But you hit one roadblock and go, roadblock number one. I'm going to pick myself up. I'm going to dust myself off. I'm going to have a, what I call golden learning opportunity about that. It is telling me something about my behavior and saying, Okay, when I am driving home from school or work, I'm feeling stressed, I'm feeling tired, I'm feeling like nobody looks after me. I'm feeling like I need some comfort. I need something. And once you can understand that, you can then start thinking, okay, so how can I implement that in a more healthy way? How can I give myself that love and care that I need? Well, I can make time to read or I can make time to run or I can make time to knit or whatever it is. Or, you know, it's an exploration, but it's having those tools. And obviously it's different for everybody. You know, I can't say to you, hey, go and read. That's going to fix your problems because you might be like, I hate reading. (laughs) So, you know, it's it's about understanding Mm self-awareness. It's about understanding the bigger picture and how that is how that is affecting your life and, and what makes you, you know, want to change things, what makes you motivated to do things 
Absolutely. That's brilliant. So what resources do you recommend daily tools um, for anyone that is at a point that want to change their habits and have a healthier lifestyle? Yeah, well, thank you for asking. Well, I mean, number one, it all comes down to commitment. And, you know, if you if you have if you're committed and you have any kind of budget to invest in yourself, come and talk to me because, you know, I just it is having someone who can help you make these changes is essentially the difference between success and failure. It really, really, really is. If you can say, yeah, I'm going to do this. I've got, you know, some invest some money that I'm going to invest. And I'm not talking about break. Well, I guess it depends. Talking about money is different. It's a difficult conversation for people. Um, for people who aren't interested in, or perhaps aren't ready, I should say, for one-on-one -on -one coaching, I have my amazing book, which, yeah. you know, this walks you through everything that I do with my clients. It literally walks you through, like, what are you mm -hmm. doing now? And what do you want life to be like in 10, 20 years time? And it walks you through all the, you know, the four pillars. How are you going to make changes? There's habit trackers. If you're going to buy this, I totally recommend getting the paperback version because you can write in the paperback version and you can't. There is a Kindle version, but you obviously, you can't use it. You can't use it for the tool that it is so it's a really really good start to understand what i'm talking about and then when you're ready come and book a call with me <laughs> i love it because um thank you very much for sending me the book so i've read it and i highly recommend it to anyone you know there's exercises there's trackers in there you can actually implement straight away so yeah i'd recommend the book to anyone my pleasure where can the listeners get your book and find you online what's your website thank you, thanks for asking so my website is drorlena.com d-r-o-r-l-e-n-a.com and so through there you can book i've got an amazing video that people can watch i call it the life transforming video which is you know it's the five shifts that i think people need to go through and i there, there are these inner shifts that people need to go through and you know spoiler alert you need to commit if you don't commit nothing changes so there's that video mm -hmm. and i'm always open to talking to people so you know the first call I offer is like a 15 minute call and that is enough for people to get to chat to me for me to ask questions which essentially are are you committed to doing this are you in a position and then you know if you're really interested in working with me then we will have another chat the book yes. you can buy on Amazon it's available on Amazon as I say I recommend getting the paperback version I'm always mm -hmm. super impatient and I want everything to arrive like in two seconds, but it's worth waiting a day or two for the paperback because I really think that so many reasons, but number one is just that you can write in it and it's meant to be a tool. It's, it's not really, it has got information in it, but it's not really a, hey, read this book. That's great information. Put it back on the shelf. It's a tool that you read this and then you start implementing it. It's meant to be, it's got 13 yes. weeks of, um, you know, journals, journal pages in it. So you could buy for a year and that will keep you going through a year. And that's an amazingly cost effective way to keep yourself going. Yeah, definitely. Your details in the show notes. So anybody can get in onto your website and find you straight away. Thank you for sharing your deep, insightful wisdom and knowledge with us today, Dr. Olina Thank Kerry. Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. What is, this is my last question. What is your definition of courage? That is a really courage. good question. And my definition of courage is feeling the fear and doing it anyhow. And, you know, I think, you know, we're talking about making changes and how you can implement mm -hmm. this to your life. And when I work with people, what I want is people to be standing there at the beginning of their journey going, oh, my goodness, this is a little bit exciting, a little bit scary, a little bit exciting. Like you're going on a big journey yeah. somewhere. You feel those nerves. You feel that anticipation. But you're going to go on that journey anyhow. And I think that is really courageous, that not knowing what's going to happen, but saying, but I'm going to deal with it. I'm going to make it work. That, in my mind, is courage. Mm -hmm.